So, Southampton won. Arsenal won. Uh, not a great performance today, Kenny. Uh, some very, very below par performances from our players. Uh, started off well. Started off lively. Got a fantastic goal from Granit Xhaka. What a finish on his weak foot. And that guy is having the season of his life. I think he scored more goals this season than he scored in the last three or four combined. And uh, he's in top, top form at the minute. Ben White, another good performance before being hooked. Martinelli, another good performance before being hooked. Uh, but there were some very bang average performances today and uh, some weird subs um, as well. But that ultimately resulted in us dropping points. First draw of the season. Uh, we are still top. But what did you make of it, mate? Well, first and foremost, I think some Arsenal fans need to keep their gob shut and allow fans who've got an opinion, who 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 want to call the matches as they see it, to be able to say what they say what they feel. Secondly, don't don't come out this lazy, unhelpful, um, you know, narrative that the referee cost us. The referee didn't cost us at all. We've we've been playing well all season, winning games, getting maximum points by just playing the game. You can't just rely on the referee. You you know, he booked Saka for diving. Saka's got a reputation of diving. He went and booked Walcott for a blatant dive. Stop going, think, oh, we lost this. We didn't win this game because the referee, there was some... That's the second the time Saka's been booked for diving this season. Just keep your gob shut. Stop trying to get likes and tweets and followers on Twitter and all any of your social media handles. Just talk, just say as it is. We didn't deserve to win this game. We didn't play well enough, you know. So Hampton didn't deserve to win this game either, but they did well enough and worked hard enough to get a draw and they forced us into mistakes. And the reason why we didn't deserve to win the game is because when we were on top, we only scored one goal. Players like Gabriel Jesus will waste all in front of goal. Don't be scared to say it. He hasn't. He, you know, his goal return is a, is very much what we predicted. We predicted he score about 15 goals this season, and that'd be good enough. But in key games, when you need a player to, you know, put the games to bed, he's not. he clearly isn't that player at the moment. He isn't doing that at the moment. And hence the fact... We're, we're allowing teams like Southampton to the, into the game. You know, I don't, that's the thing. His, his work, you know, outside the box is fantastic. Coles the ball up well, links play, makes chances, roughs up defenders, gets players into play. Brilliant. But in front of the goal, where we needed him today, it was very wasteful. Just say it. There's nothing wrong with saying it. We're being critical. Odegaard, again, got bullied out of the game in the second half. Just say it. Partey, my favourite player, got you know, was giving the ball away because they had to force some mistakes. Just have the balls to say it. Have the balls mm. to say it. Nothing wrong with that. We appraise games as we see it. We don't just, you know, change attack and say, all right, we've got credit in the bank. This is a very, very critical season for this football club. And this performance today wasn't good. And the reason why we know it wasn't good is because this is a prelude of what happened last week at, at Ellen Road. And what was what happened in Norway, where we have slipped off? Yes, there are extenuating circumstances. You know, um, we've been playing um, a lot of games this season because of um, our inclusion in the Europa League. But whose fault's that? The manager. We don't have. To, we didn't, that team that he selected against Europe, Zurich was good enough to win this group. We've seen the quality of the teams we're playing. They're not great, so he didn't have to play all these players. We've been saying that you don't have to play Sack all the time. We'd be saying you don't have to play Xhaka and all these other players like Odegaard. But he's chosen to do that because he, he's gambled and he wants to win the competition. Respect that. But when you mm. use the situation as fatigue, as a reason, just remember the manager said that if you want to be a top player, i.e. Bukayo Saka or any young player, they have to be playing 70 games a season. So you can't have it both ways. You know what I mean? Mm. Don't make excuses. Give Sam Hampton the respect that they deserve and look at our team and say, look, it didn't happen today. We we were Paul poorly. Yeah, fact, absolute fact. Uh, you just spoke about Martin Odegaard. Let's talk about him. Uh, Subbed off again, uh, disappeared again. Missed an yes. absolute glorious chance, and then a couple of minutes later, Granite Xhaka showed him how to finish. Um, mm. This guy, I don't, I don't get it, Kenny. Real talk, I don't get the hype, mate. He's off form. I don't. He's off. He's, he's he's off form. But in terms of what you get the hype, in terms of the hype, this season he's proved us wrong. But, you know, he is fading in games. We should be allowed to delay that. And if you... So when you do a clip, you know, of our podcast, when we're talking about Odegaard, when we're making straight points about it, we don't need press or little, you know, people criticising us and saying, oh, we're this and that. We're not... It's not personal. We call it as we see it. Odegaard starts off really well, as he normally does. 
getting involved in the game, geeing up his players. But in the second half, he faded because the reason why he faded is because Southampton got in on him and pressed him out of the game. And that's exactly, exactly um, um, what, what they're there to do. There's no shame in it. Um, he's off form. We're saying it. But, you know, but if we're going to praise, you know, everything, what he's done this season, going into the business end of the season, we hope that he improves. But if he doesn't improve, then we're entitled to say, you know what, hasn't worked out for Martin this season. Because yeah, 100%, 100%. He's, happy, he's happy to take the price. He's happy to, he's, people who respect Odegaard are happy for us to praise him when he's playing well. Well, let's mm. just say, well, you know what? He gave the ball into position. He's not pressing from the front. Just say so. But, you know, we're asking. Uh, let's, let's talk about Tommy Atu. He started at left back. He ended up at right back. Um, yes. In my opinion, he should have been hooked at half time. I thought he was shocking. Um, why is he starting games over Kieran Tierney, Kenny? Well, that's, you, that's what you, you, tell me. you tell me because I put on Twitter. Uh, a little message of G up uh, to uh, my guy um, Kieran Tierney. I said, "Look, keep calm, Kieran, and keep working hard because I'm sorry, it's not acceptable that the best left back in a cl- at our club is playing is is basically now third choice." I mean, you hear the commentator today. He looks at Tommy Asu on a pitch. He says, "Tommy Asu's playing because Sachenko, um he still hasn't um, passed the fitness test and he's still not travelled with the squad." I'm thinking, what? Kieran Tierney, the, the, who's part of that song, you know, you know, basically like a, singing up uh, Mikel Arteta, you know, mm. Tierney at the back, Gabby and Tate. I was thinking, hang on here, what has happened um, since then? You can't just say injuries are the reason why he's the third, he's now, in many people's eyes, the third choice left back at the country, in, inside the club, at the club. It doesn't make sense because he should be playing. Yes, yeah. Tommy Ashley did really well against um, Liverpool, and he, he was competent against Leeds. But today showed that it wasn't working because what happened is Elio Nussi, in the second half, realised that Tommy Asu wasn't, um, you know, doing the overlaps for um, Martinelli, that Granit Xhaka had to do that by playing, for, playing further forward. And I can understand why he's getting Jack at the cut play further forward because if he's looking at not playing Kieran Tierney and playing Sachenko and asking Kieran Ch- to chat and go in the midfield, it makes sense for Grant Jacker to play further forward, i.e. you've seen his best football. But you can still play like that with Kieran Tierney. Kieran Tierney can still go into the middle and be an auxiliary and, you know, like midfielder, be part of the three and use his, and be able to put crosses from, you know, not from the byline, but quite deep or make these deep passes. And then Grant Jacker can still do that. It still works with Kieran Tierney. So I don't understand why Tommy S is doing it. Yes, horse of courses. If you want, if you got a game that you want to win, you want to march out of the game, fantastic. But I don't understand the selection, and it backfired today. It backfired, and it could have been costly because Southampton got a lot of encouragement down at um, right hand side, and it actually improved for us when Tommy S went off. Now, that's not criticism against Tommy S. No, he went, to, he went to right back. Yeah, he went to right back, but it's no criticism. It just hasn't worked out, and he's not he's not playing his natural position. So, which means, you know, Arteta has to think again, and he has to decide who his best left back is. I think it's but this, no this is going to be an issue going forward for me, Kenny. Right, because we've got we've got Zinchenko, who we got told was only out for the international break. That was six mm. weeks ago. Yeah, literally mm-hmm. six weeks ago. Apparently, he had a little calf tear. He was suspended for the first Ukraine game anyway, so they kept him at home and said, don't worry about coming. We're, we're, we're cool. Yeah? He was supposed to only miss them two weeks and he's back. Yeah. Then we're now nearly in November and he's still not back. But now, instead of playing the most decorated left-back at our club, one of the most mm. decorated players in the Premier League. Oh, but he's yes. in Scotland. Who cares? You've still got to go and win it, mate. You still mm. have to do it. Treble, doubles, quadruple, whatever. you still got to win them, right? Mm. He's not as injury prone as people make him out to be. Exactly. Right? Exactly. And this it's is a the problem I have with it. Since he's been at this football club, yeah, Thomas Party's now played more games than him since Party signed. But since Party signed before this season, I think Tierney played more games than Party in that two seasons. So Party's injured more than Tierney. Tommy Asu mm. was out for six months nearly with a calf injury. Zinchenko's now been out for six weeks with a calf. Why is it always that the player? That is the the first choice, Tierney. Yeah, in mm. this case, 
Why is it always that player is the one that can't get his place after a good performance? There's other players that drop stinkers that keep their place. Kieran Tierney came on the uh, played the other day, and he was fantastic. I can't remember what game it was. Yeah, yeah. I think it, it was the Premier League. What game was it? I can't remember. Yeah, you know, fantastic performance. Then he played in the Europa League. Fantastic performance. But then he got benched for the Liverpool game, and I'm like. Yeah. Well, why can't you keep your place? Because there's other players on that pitch that put in stinkers and they keep their place. What is, well, what think, is the position with this guy? The manager's obsessed with... Uh, I think maybe it could be a situation where if he where he he, he prefers it that to get Grant Jack to play his best football, he wants him further forward. So if you look at where Grant Jack is playing, sometimes he does go down the byline, down the left, mm. you know, left hand side. Sometimes to put crosses in, but you all, may, all have shots in goal. And maybe with great jackers and not able to get in the box, maybe that's what it is, you know. But that you can still get great jacker, you know, playing forward in that auxiliary, you know, ghosting and left hand side with Kieran Tenney in the side because Kieran Tenney's an intelligent footballer. I'm not saying that we, you know, we don't need to change. Of course, we need to change, but you know, from a, this, a games like this, your bread and butter. Uh, you want to, the way Southampton were playing, especially with Elian Lucy, you needed Kieran yeah. Tinney out there. It's only after the event that, you know, that, you know, he's brought him on. And, you know, what happened? We looked more solid down that left hand side when, with Kieran. All right. Attacking he more wise. in 25 minutes than Tommy Asu yeah. since Liverpool. Yeah. All right. It didn't happen from attacking sides because we didn't have Martin Elliott there. But it's questions that, you know, we, we do have to talk about. Yes, everything's been going our way. We're still two points uh, top of the table. But, what I'm trying to say is that when you get in this little bit of a rut and, you know, and it, you don't win the games, you're thinking, you know what, we've got to really improve here, man. We've got to freshen it up. Maybe now we've beaten them, Eindhoven, we've got to make sacrifices for that game. We've got to say, you know what, we need to keep these these guys fresh because we've got some big games now. And I'm not on Forest. We're going to win it, all right? We're going mm-hmm. to find a way. We might win it company, might be scrappy, we're going to win it. But Chelsea away... You only have to look at Chelsea and look at the, the, um, their um, their form yesterday. You know, Potter was was you know wasn't stubborn enough to decide. You know what? It's not working, man. May not have mm. got May not have got a spare. They got very the lucky field. yesterday. Very yeah, lucky, exactly. but then they were unlucky not to win it. They were lucky exactly. to be winning, but then they were unlucky not to win it. And we've got a chance look- against Potter. We've got a chance yeah. against Chelsea. But, but this is the thing, right? This, this league's mad. Like I've, I've just seen the score pop up that Newcastle are beating Tottenham. Yeah, they're one nil at, well, at White Hart Lane. Yeah. Right? No, it's, yeah, they just scored. So that. Just, so if New, so if Newcastle is it one all? Is it? No, it's two nil. Amaron's just oh, robbed. Uh, well, there you go. So that doesn't matter that we drew today because Tottenham are losing. That's how our fans think, Kenny. But listen, on that bombshell, uh, we will do player ratings shortly. Maybe in about yeah. half hour, forty minutes. Um, Don't worry about yeah. that. You, rest, you, you ought to watch the half times um, Paul Smorton in this game. But all I'm trying to say, right? The positive thing is, you know, we didn't we we didn't lose last year. We'd have got smashed to pieces, you know. Mm. And you know what's happened is that some anti substitutes has kind of helped us because you know they they brought on players who were not who weren't pressing us out of the game. We could have you know probably um, if we had. I think what happened was that we didn't have physically, mentally, we didn't have the legs to try and win the game at 1-1. Yeah, but, you know, all we're, saying, all we're saying is this is constructive criticism and saying, look, this is what happened and this is what we're worried about happening against Chelsea and about the better teams. And I, we don't want a situation where we're going to say, I can't wait for this um, World Cup to come because... You know, we're around the cosh here. We need to break, exactly. Yeah, listen, I'll send you the link shortly, mate, and uh, appreciate the love as always. Um, but um, yeah, make sure you check out my fan cam, follow Kenny Ken 1972. Uh, Jez's fan cam's coming in a minute, and then Matt, and then we'll be doing player ratings. Conte looks stressed, I can't lie. Adios, amigo. Ateta fuera, para siempre. Ciao, adios.